you very um, much for, for hosting this. Thank you, for, thank you for joining us. I'll just read a little bit of a, a bio about, about you before starting. But um, a video, Salazar is an award-winning director who, mashallah, has graced us with his um, uh, second appearance here on Film Club. And he's had 35 years of experience in filmmaking. He's originally from Los Angeles in California, and uh, he studied theater and comparative religion. But later on, he traveled to Europe, the Middle East, um, around the world, and now finally resides in London. So he's a documentary filmmaker. He's uh, made many films that I'm sure many of you will have seen. Um, those of you who have been to Film Club will have seen the film on Tahab Rahman, as well as some other films. Um, and in particular, of course, uh, a film that's very well known is the film on Al-Ghazali called The Alchemist of Happiness, which I'm sure many of you have seen. So he's also a jury member of several film festivals, including the Festival of Religion and Cinema, um, Trento in Italy, 2006, and also um, the Al Jazeera Film Festival in Qatar, 2005. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the session as usual. I'm going to be asking, I'll be moderating the session and asking questions, but I will be looking at the questions in the chat box um, starting now. So starting now, I'll be looking at whatever questions you have. If you like, and this is up to you, you can state your name and also where you're from. We'd like to know who's, who's seeing the, who's participating. And, um, and uh, you can ask your questions. So I'll begin with the first question and, um, and we'll, I'll just get the ball rolling. Um, so first of all, Sidi, I'll ask a very simple question, but I'm sure there's a story behind it. Uh, how did the project come about? And also the title, what's the significance of the title? Because it's a very interesting title between two worlds. Yes. Well, first of all, thank you very much for hosting once again, and, and thank everyone in, who's, uh, who's taken the time to come and watch the film. It, it always uh, it touches me deeply when I, when I know that there is an interest in our work and, and in our efforts to try and elucidate certain uh, facets of, of, of the Islamic faith. Anyway, um, the, the, the film originated through an idea of, um, I think it was Sheikha Naima bin Yaish who, who appears in the film when she was in um, Abu Dhabi and she had met uh, Sheikha Shamsa. And then through the connection with um, Sheikha Ibtihal al-Jifri, the sister of uh, Habib Ali, um, right. they, they approached me uh, to, to, to commemorate, uh, to make a film commemorating the life and work of, of Mohammed Knut Bernstrom. I didn't know him previously. That's I didn't have any idea who he was. And so uh, it was tabula rasa. We had to start from scratch to kind of identify those salient points about his life that we felt could, um, could bring further sort of, uh, Shed, shed further light on, on his on his work and his contribution to to you know to 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 Islam to Islam and, especially in yeah, Sweden and Europe absolutely and and you know and and they the the Sheikh has felt it very um, important that we could come out with a film that somehow addressed these questions how can a you know, not only a rational person, but someone from the Scandinavia who has comes from a very, um, you know, or uh, you'd say traditional background in terms of Swedish culture, could right. could embrace Islam and and then take it on with their whole heart. So it, that was a fascinating aspect that they wanted us to to probe deeper. And you know, so you're uncovering some of the, um, you know. Um, choices that the life choices he made how he came about with this metanoia this complete uh turnabout in in his being yes uh you know from someone of, of that background and what so were there any key themes that you wanted to convey let's say not just his own spirit was it about purely yeah. his own spiritual journey yeah or because it seemed to me that there were also themes of I think understanding between, in particular, between Islam and Europe, that yeah. seems to be a, a key a key aspect. But there was also the idea, which I picked up a lot more of this time around, watching it, um, of the 
relationship between different religions because on the one hand he's a convert so technically he leaves not just he leaves from lutheranism to catholicism and then um, leaves i think because of the second vatican council and if you could elaborate maybe on the significance of that well but well, um right yeah. but then there's also this idea of um the commonalities also between religions which starts to come up more toward the second half of the film that he actually talks about i think the gospel of john and about finding meaning in that as well and that actually christians and muslims in sweden understand each other a lot better than let's say someone coming from purely secular framework yeah well certainly at the heart of his quest i mean he was a, he was a seeker in the mm. in the deepest uh, sense of in meaning of and 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 so his whole life was devoted in a sense to questioning to to overcoming doubts that he had and and, and you know he was very sincere in his in his uh, un, you know in his belief in and 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 seeking so for 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 us it was a, a matter of uncovering you know those those points that really showed the commonality between the religions and the universality yes uh, that islam is not some something you know extraneous to to the other the message of christianity or judaism you yes. know it's all within the abrahamic monotheistic traditions and um, and i think that you know they have a clear understanding of of that to get a clear understanding of that and and i think it was through his encounters with muslims uh, in Morocco that that enabled him to to not only appreciate it on a theoretical uh, basis, but fundamentally sort of uh, embrace the the not only the doctrine, but the practice. So uh, that actually leads very well into my my next question, because mm -hmm. there one of the themes, especially toward the end, mm -hmm. is, of course, his translation of the Quran, but it's made very clear that um, he's not just translating it on a literal level, um, nor was he really interested in the translation as much as he was interested in conveying inner meaning. And there is this, um, one of the striking moments for me in the film was when he's asked, why is he fasting? At that point, he hasn't become Muslim yet. And he says, I'm fasting out of faith. I really, I've never really never heard that idea before that you, you fast purely from that, you know, he was, Fasting, not I was just, oh, I was trying it out or something like that. But he really felt inwardly that there was a function to fasting, a spiritual function to fasting. Um, what was, um, it, is the film really about the inner meaning of religion, would you say? Uh, I would say that is certainly one of the subtexts of it, as, as well as our, our uh, collectively our journey from this life into the next. So go, yes. going back to your, your original question about the meaning of the between two worlds. Yes. I mean, he was not only bridging East and the West cultures, but as well, uh, he was he was making that journey. He was the... This life and the, the next life. Yeah, as you can see at the end of the film when he's no longer on the bark, you know, that... Oh. that it, yeah, I, the, on, the, on, the sh on the ship. Yeah, and yes. I actually wanted to ask you about the... Um, the the idea of, of the there are, there's a dra dramatic aspect to this film as there was in the film on Tahab Rahman and the film Al Ghazali but the difference here first of all there's no dialogue but secondly you don't go in a linear fashion you keep cutting back to certain images in a and it, you know you go back and forth in time between him typing um, translating yeah. and then going back and you also keep cutting back to the ocean very interesting yes. at the beginning at the end it, it's something we see constantly like a rhythm rhythm yeah. to it what was your what went into uh, tell us a little bit about your process of editing the film and why why you opted for that all right well to begin with um, the film evolved organically we had done a certain amount of research on 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 getting the background of of islam in sweden and its and its connection to uh, but um, once we set out on the journey, we, we literally, it was a very literal process of getting on a boat and traveling across to Sweden right. from, the, from the United Kingdom. And um, so we were just experimenting to begin with, you know, so, but then like in, in a lot of filmmaking, you know, you, 
you throw yourself, you open yourself to the universe or, or to ins for inspiration and guidance. Yeah. yeah. And then that motif somehow developed over time. And then, and then, and then once we were back into the edit, it became clear that we could use that as very much to convey that sense of the journey between two worlds. Yes. And, and, um, you know, that it would create a kind of a, uh, you know that to show the passage, it would create it would create a sense of 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 the of the inward journey as well. Yes. So there there are some comments coming in. Um, many people have I won't read every single thing, but mm -hmm. people have remarked that it was a very beautiful insight to learn about this blessed human being. We have some people joining us from Egypt as well. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and we also. Um, uh, well, first there's a comment, well, there, there's a question, which is if we need to rewatch or if people want to share the film, is it available online anywhere for them to access? It, it isn't. We, we actually sell it. I, we sell it through Matt Media and that, I mean, if they really do, but, it, you know, it, we could, maybe they could speak to you afterwards about it, I mean, how they can get a, you know, a private viewing of it. But Right. And then the other thing is, we have people joining us from the UK as well. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, another comment, which is, thank you for an amazing movie. We felt moved by his genuine love for God mm -hmm. and for the correlation between all religions. So I wanted to talk a little bit about maybe about the, the thing about love, because he seemed to be moved by something um, that went beyond the, I guess, be, beyond the literalistic aspect of the, 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 um, outer aspect of religion. And, um, you know, it's, it seemed to me that his, he, there, there's this idea at the beginning that he's a seeker. Yeah. And um, that is stated by multiple people. Yeah. And, um, well, I guess how exactly, what are your, what are your thoughts, let's say, if we could move it. I mean, I think you know, this whole question between destiny and um, individual will also plays into it kaza and qadr right as you see it at the beginning there at the beginning there are two beginnings to the film as it were okay there's this first initial uh, preamble where the the uh, the avalanche happens yes and then it turns to water right and it's almost like this is i felt for me it's some it, there's a symbolic you know it, it, there's a sense of a, a symbol there within operating within the image of of the impermanence, but also of the imminence uh, of, of the divine in, in our lives and yeah. how then his life was so affected by the death of his father when right. he was four years old. I mean, that impacted, and it's something that carried on right throughout his life, you know, why he was saved, why his father perished and, and who was, what was this presence? It's almost like a ghost story that, you know, the people are, are recounting, you know, there's this sense of, well, that there's more to, to there's life more. than, yeah. And it's, it's interesting that you kind of, you had that idea, but then it, it's sort of left unexplained. I'm wondering if that was a deliberate choice on your part or whether there was no real explanation as to what it, because it's not explained exactly what he saw. We just, we just are told that there is this apparition and yes. that it was very interesting the way it was phrased and maybe you could help us understand it, that he didn't, that it was there and yet it wasn't there. And that he said it would keep coming back to him throughout the rest of his life. Yes. Well, I do think that um, I, I, you have to leave something like that open-ended. You cannot okay. put a definite, um, con with any certainty say, well, it was the spirit of a, of a wali of Allah, of a, was a great right. saint or something, but, or a projection, or I think everyone has to, find their own way. It's something that he returned to again and again, but I think he did say it to someone that it, he was, he felt it was like someone in a, in a white jalaba with a, right. and like that. And then at the end, you see him, the actual yes. hit manifest. That, that footage, did you take, uh, I'm, I'm, no, no, he had that passed away. Archival. Okay. Yeah. This was archival, but we didn't realize that it existed until after we were well into the edit. Oh, so, I mean, we found out in the course of, of, 
of our research after we started editing and we were back. Yes. So right. um, we were able to just take that one clip and I, you know, to give it the. And I think it was very well Dakota. placed at the end because I didn't make, you see him from behind at the beginning, yes. which I assume was not part of the, was that part of the archival footage or was it? All um, of that, well, him, of okay. him. Because yeah. it actually, it tied very well because I didn't expect that because we'd already seen him coming, walking from behind, which is true, yeah. you know, like a, you let the audience into that. <laughs> Correct. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> like a, you're a trick, you're tricking yeah, us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that's but, the great reveal, you know. And it was wonderful what... because uh, I think he has a very the actor playing, um, playing, playing him. Yes. Uh, kind of, that's uh, my son, Yasin. Right. Your son, Yasin, who also produced the film as well. Correct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he's he's remarkable because he has to play different him in di at different stages in his life. Mm. Um, but I, I thought it was interesting that he deliberately had a very so like very serious, somber type of expression. He's always concentrating and working. And at the end, we see him come out and he's, you know, just smiling and kissing the children. Yeah. Um, was that contrast a deliberate one? I, I, yes, you could say definitely, because it's all throughout the, the journey that he's in this pensive state and that he's he's very much in, in the qabd, in the constricted and in, 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 in concentrated on his on his journey, on his mission. Right. And at the end, you're, we reveal that the actual Knut, you know, who is, who is with us, as I said, he's, he hasn't died in that sense that he lives with us uh, in, through his works. There, there's a comment um, from, from Egypt, I believe, mm -hmm. um, about, the, about, these are some comments that are coming in that the idea of between two worlds could really be about connecting the outer and inner worlds. And I think it, it's an Arab, alam, alam al-Bahir, al alam mm -hmm. al-Batin. Mm -hmm. And then also remarking the fact that he was saved from death twice. And, mm -hmm. and that the fact that that was a very significant mm -hmm. thing, that it, was, it wasn't a, a one-off, that mm -hmm. he was really preserved. So I was wondering if you could comment on, 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 that, on that remark by, um, by, I think, Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was the that was when he he was, you know, within his own um, agenda. He had to get to the to Madrid, the and he was driving, and and then this, it transpired that he had not only one but two flat tires in the yes. course of the journey, and and completely missed. So, despite his best, you know, willing to 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 uh, to get on that flight. There was no way he could do it. And that that's where the idea of, you know, that was his destiny. It was not meant, he was, it was not his, his, it wasn't his time. time. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And because he had this work to do, he had to get this, the Quran uh, translated into, into Swedish. And, and there was a certain kind of fate uh, in uh, play at play, you know, for, for this, you know, and I think that drove him on as well. Right. Could you tell us a little bit about the... Um... Oh, all right, we have a question coming in now. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much. This film was really touching. What was the reaction from the film, uh, to the film, both from people who knew him, mm -hmm. or from, pe from people who knew him? Mm -hmm. um, and um, and this is a question, it's a question from Germany. So Nora mm -hmm. Huda is saying salams mm -hmm. from Germany. Oh, so sure. what was the reaction to the film um, from the people who knew him? And I would also add actually um, from maybe people in Sweden more generally. Yeah. Well, um, we were able to have a, a screening, a commemoration uh, in Morocco and the invited guests included uh, some of the people that, that were uh, his colleagues from the Swedish embassy and people, di diplomats that knew him. They came down and there was a, a couple of days of, of commemorating his life and his his work. So the film was screened then. And then I, I think the moment that it it moved people the most was um, was actually at the end when you act, when you saw him and then right. it, it just brought home this this was who he was. And then because everyone is projecting and conveying their 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 image, their their remembrances, their 
recollections the way the recollections and the way he he had touched them all so that it, it really brought it home at the end so this is right. who we were um, you know all speaking about and and as far as sweden goes i mean it's so it's hard to gauge you know how people uh react i mean if you're if you're predisposed towards the subject i think you'll 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 give it more time and you'll allow allow the film to uh, work grow its, on you. Yes, grow on you and, and work its way within, you know, into you so that you you can start to to access to, it. To, yeah, to access it exactly. Uh, you know, so but as far as I I don't know how how a, a, a normal I mean, you know, uh, what would you say uh, a Swedish audience who who maybe aren't um, pre so uh, in, engaged like like one of the contributors said well you know us Swedes you know we are belonging to the Lutheran church and we're not really you know we like our religion you know it's like light and so right. like let's we don't go there but I think people do need to kind of start to quit you know start to evaluate where, where they stand vis-a-vis -vis Islam and because of this the question of the immigration and things is, is right has made it, you know, there is this element of Islamophobia that, that has become kind of more reared its ugly head and, and one has to kind of address these issues, you know, head on. That's definitely yeah. one of the key themes in the film as well. Yeah. Was how to make, you know, Islam have a Swedish kind of uh, character. Mm -hmm. We also have um, a comment. Salamu alaikum, my dear brother Sidi Salazar. My best greetings from Casablanca. Uh, and <laughs> and um, from Betah yeah. as a, as a dean. And right. um, I guess that leads into maybe another question, which is um, the scenes, uh, which is the locations that you shot at. Mm. Because when I look, when we look at it multiple times, um, we see that's actually shot in a number of, a number of different locations. Mm. Um, I'm wondering, first of all, the locations in Morocco, um, yes. were those just like generic shots or did you go to very specific did you have very specific reasons why you went to certain yes. locations in yes. particular i think there was i i'm not sure if it was whether it was a sin it looked like a like a mosque I yes mean, outwardly uh, but i think it was a synagogue or a church or something no like there that. was a church ah, okay and now these were the actual actual locations so um, we were in very much following in, in his footsteps right when we interviewed the people when he interviewed the fellow in the the library that's yes. exactly where he would go to sit that was the exact church he would go and and meet people with and when he met that young man on the beach that was the exact location he went the uh when he's working in the swedish consulate that that was the actual place and and that same goes for when he was in his residence getting served tea and, and looking out the in the garden. That was, so we were able, alhamdulillah, right. to kind alhamdulillah. of, uh, yeah, follow, follow, in, his follow in his footsteps. And so there's a, re I guess that really imbues another level because you could have taken the easy way and said, well, mm. shoot a generic shot. And, mm. and we could shoot the indoors and in anywhere else in mm. not in Morocco, no one would know. <laughs> but well, we, our, there uh, were one or two, uh, you know, we cheated one or two, uh, scenes, All you right. know, because we we subsequent like in when he's typing and that was in sure. our our house. So, but other than that, right, right, we tried to be as faithful to to it as as we could. Yes, and and the um, actually the talking about the interiors, there's this idea. It begins um, with these. You just hear the clock ticking, mm -hmm. and we actually get the the look a little bit of look i think what was his residence and, exactly uh, was yes and uh, could you explain maybe the significance of some of the shots because i i i did think that some of them were significant especially start mm. this idea of starting with the quran and the stand but mm. we have like a candlestick there yes. as well could you talk a little bit about why and also why you framed you frame the film in that way because you actually start with that and then you end with almost the exact same Sequence. Well, I mean, literally, it's bookended. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
So, no, because exactly right. We wanted to kind of open it on this. That's why I say there are two beginnings. Yes. The first one is the overall theme, the late motif that will carry through with the water and the, yes. and, and the, the that that's kind of almost like uh, the pre sort of before this, the, this, the, the film starts proper. Yes. And then it starts on the clock in time. So we're going from, you know, within time. Right. And then by the end, it's we're out of time. Between <laughs> two worlds again. Bet exactly. Right. So it, it was meant to be on, on numerous levels that, that, and so those were his actual possessions. And as you, you know, you could see. And so we wanted to kind of establish his, his, the material culture within his own uh, existence. Yes. And also and, good, a good look at his, um, uh, I think it was interesting that you also showed, how, it wasn't just the Islamic items, you also showed mm. his medals and, and pictures of him as an ambassador as well. Well, we had to establish it before he became Muslim. It wasn't just one, so that the story of his conversion is, is very much part of the, we of have the a, narrative. We have a question that just came in. Good evening. As a director, how or did the making of the movie change you in your thoughts about life and God? Um, and did your initial intention change as you went along? Mm, very good question. I mean, uh, with, with any film that I undertake, there's a certain amount of education and, and, and self-examination as well. You know, yes. and, and, you know, so that a film isn't just about doing something very ex exteriorly, you know, it, there is right. an inward process of, of coming to, to, uh, to, to a greater understanding in the same way that Knut Bernstrom would read, uh, study the Quran, and then he would have to stop and, and actually think about it. What, what, <laughs> and contemplate, I suppose yes. you could say that, that, that was very much his own um, modus operandi. And, and as uh, the same here, I think to, to do justice to any film, you don't want to just assume anything that, you know, that it's part of the, of that process of when you're making a film that you're constantly evaluating, questioning, delving, going deeper, you know, praying and hoping that, you know, that the, the solutions uh, arrive on the screen so that right. people can then be inspired by that. And I guess that, that comes into a little bit into your intention as well, which is to inspire and to awaken something. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we have another com uh, question. Uh, thank you for the deeply moving film. How did you decide or identify the people who needed to be interviewed, who, can you, mm -hmm. um, who knew Canute to be interviewed? Um, and did everyone make the cut? And there's also another, uh, a, well, by the same person, but not similar, a very interesting question. Uh, was it a free flowing or a scripted interview and uh, and what was the what was the interview process mm. like? Because the comments that they they all speak with such admiration and awe mm. of of him. I mean, we did want to get a a, a, a well rounded sort of choice of of, of answers that we could yes. then craft in, into the into the final script as we were editing. So um, we started out, we didn't know too many people, but one led to another. And it was kind of, like I said, it was a very organic process of, of uncovering. Exploration. exploration, who knew what. And, and not everyone did make the cut. There was one of his, um, well, someone that worked with him in the consulate. She mm. was very reluctant to be interviewed. And finally she consented and we had hoped to, uh, find a, a place for her in the film, but you cannot just, we couldn't justify it because I think maybe her, her answers were too generic or, or they, she didn't give an, you know, I tried to find, you know, out of all of the people that we interviewed, they all knew him in, you know, some only knew him from the context of later on, you know, when he was already translating the Quran and, and in the Swedish Muslim context. Whereas the Before people, the end of the film. yeah. Whereas the people in, um, and we actually filmed in Sweden first, right? 
So that's how it, that's how we did it. We got and then through that, our contacts led us to Morocco, and we went down where he lived. And he had a stepson and a there and the stepson had a family. So we we managed to meet them and then sort of it was it was very much um, uncovering the trail, as yes. it were, of of the people that knew him. And he he lived in a in a coastal town called Lorache. So right. from there, you know, he was he was quite well known. He, even though he he kept to himself, he was, um, you know, yeah. people knew about him. And um, what other let's say other research went into the film? Because did you have to? Uh, was it just the interviews alone, or did was there any other reading or? Well, initially, initially we had. Uh, our, our dear friend Mustafa Gouverneur doing some research for us and right. uh, just uncovering more to do with the, um, the background to, to Islam in Sweden. Yes. You know, uh, but, but, you know, in the end, it's good to, ha you know, to prepare, but yes. then in the end, you know, you, you, it just, you know, it turns out that it's, it's really through the, we made that a different kind of film. We didn't make one purely on on facts, and I mean right. facts, yes. But in terms of you know the standard thing of Islam was came to blah and then this and you know it had to be yeah. I mean, much easily, more. Yeah, it could easily mm -hmm. have become a film purely about identity and about um, Islam in Europe or any one yeah. number of themes. But I think because the film was about a, a man's life. Mm. And, and his spiritual exploration, it was actually to, able to deal with all of that without um, getting focused on any one thing, but really concentrating on him. Um, the, yeah, I hope I, that it would transcend it in terms of, you know, that yes, it shed light on elucidated certain aspects of things to do with Islam in Sweden and the Quran translation and that, but, but somehow there, it carried it beyond that. Beyond the point, that point. Um, if there are any other um, comments or questions that anyone would like to make, um, we could perhaps use them to, to wrap up the session. Mm -hmm. um, unless CD, you want to continue, I'm, I'm more happy than happy to do so. No, uh, it's it's up. It's uh, I know it's late in Kuala Lumpur. I think everyone here but, is fine. <laughs> all right, but well, um, uh, carry on. If you, I don't want to. I, I, it's better to have people want us to come back rather than oh, well, we've had enough of that. So, <laughs> I guess um, keep them wanting, as they say. <laughs> keep the audience. Um, I guess. Well, I have maybe let's say one more question, and then I'll, I'll ask you another question just to just to, to wrap it up. Um, okay. Well, the first thing that one of the last things I'd like to ask um, is about uh, this idea of. That, that I, th I thought was very significant. Um, you included at certain points, it, it seems to, to me anyway, to be his, him speaking. Mm -hmm. Like he, that and without actually showing him speaking, but you actually have, I assume they must have been quotations from the commentary. Correct. Yes. Um, could you explain the reason why you selected certain, com uh, certain quotations rather than others? In particular, there was a very beautiful um, passage about you know, heaven and hell, and mm. obviously the last judgment, which mm. all religions in some shape or form, the major religions of the world believe in that. But then there's this idea that all the people in hell, um, this idea of any, you can explain it probably in more detail. Than Even me, if but they this have idea like mercy, a, a mustard grain of, all right, of, of, of goodness, of, of goodness of, that they're taken yeah. out and put into the river. Yes. Could you explain it, a little bit about your- Well, reason? I think it's to do with the, uh, the, the notion of mercy and 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 I think when he found the compassion and mercy of of of, of the divine, you know, the, how it's expressed within an Islamic context, I think that it proved to him. I mean, it showed to him, um, you know, the validity of something like that. It wasn't all just damnation and hell and that, and there's no, you know, punishment and that, you know. So that I think he was a very um, kind soul himself 
Yes. And I think it, that re, that that resonated when he read that. It resonated with him, and and probably, you know, something that he he in, in, endeavored to live by by those by those virtues of, of compassion and mercy and showing kindness to people, even if they were from the lower classes and, yes. you know, and, and I think, you know, it showed him a, a real kind of almost saintly care, uh, you know, characteristic. Right. And, 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 uh, and the fact that he was, um, as you say, that, that it wasn't just a case of going to visit scholars and that type of thing, which you'd expect, mm-hmm. but that he actually, I think the impression that was given is that he actually opened his house. Mm. Kind of like his, his official residence as a diplomat and welcome people from, from different places. From all the, walks of life, yes. All walks of life, which would have been very unusual, particularly not just for a foreigner, but also someone of that social standing. Um, and, and, and I probably shocked some of his Moroccan um, friends and things yes. like that who were a bit it didn't scathing. Seem, I mean, the, huh? it, the friend who spoke in the film didn't seem too pleased that he also pleased no. him. <laughs> no, because I think they also felt protective and, and yes. felt that he, he maybe he could have been taken advantage of. Yes. You know, be, be maybe, you know, by certain elements in the in that society or less than noble in their intentions. Before we go, Siri, um, yeah. are there any, first of all, are there any other comments you'd like to make about the film? And lastly, what, what exactly is it that you like people to take away from this film uh, and to take away from the life of Knud Munstrom? Thank well, all right. Um, it's, I guess, I hope first of all, that, every, that people were moved genuinely by it. You know, I know it's not a film for, you know, masses, the mass, you know, I think that the people that come to this film, watch it and, and are open to it, will, will take something away from it that, that, that they can reflect upon in their, for their own lives. And that's the best, you know, I could hope for is that people use it, that we use, utilize our time that we have as yeah. we're going between two worlds, like the traveler who takes shade under the tree for a brief time before he continues his journey, we're we're in that that situation ourselves, and and that we we utilize in this time wisely, and and you know we we help each other on the path, you know. Yes. Well, a beautiful ending to to the session, and thank you very much, City of Rio Salazar. For it's been my great great pleasure, City. I wish we could continue more and. I hope, inshallah, that we can have you again. Um, it would be my great another, pleasure. Another one uh, sincerely. So thank, thank you. you very much, everybody, for coming. And um, uh, I won't um, keep you all very long. Just the only thing I want to say is that um, thank, uh, this event was brought to you by Piecemeal and also Muka, Muka Cafe. Thank you to um, City of Video Salazar for gracing us with uh, both the film which we had the privilege of watching and also your presence here with us to explain it to us and to discuss it with us. And um, thank you to all the people uh, who are involved. There are many people behind this. There are people behind the scenes who are involved in, in uh, bringing this, this whole project, not just the actual event, but the lead up to it as well. And um, thank you to everyone. And also thank you to everyone who's come, come from all over the world to join us. Please come back again. So Film Club is on the fourth Tuesday of the month. Um, I gave the details at the beginning. If you'd like to know more, you can always come to the uh, Peacemill Facebook page. So thank you very much for coming and we hope to see you all um, next month, inshallah. All right. Thank you. Peace be upon you. Wa alaikum salam.